In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth, the sun and moon, the beasts of the sea, land and air. But there was something the Almighty found lacking. There was no one to oversee his creation, no one to rule upon these beasts of sea, land and air. So thusly, he took dust from the ground and breathed into it, and from this dust, the Adama came man, Adam, and thus begins our mytho minute. Adam, upon creation in the image of the Lord, was tasked with overseeing and naming all which flew in the air and crawled along the ground. What the man said was truth, and thusly the beast that he named and the birds that he called were named according to what he said. However, for Adam, overseeing the earthly paradise of Eden left him lacking and overwhelmed. You see, outside of the Lord his God, Adam had no one to speak to, no one to relate to. Thusly the Lord, seeing this, put him into a deep slumber, and once asleep the Lord took a bone from Adam's side and created a partner, a woman. This woman would soon be known as Eve, and the two would then oversee creation, man and woman. They were naked, and they were humble. For some time they oversaw the garden, and the birds of the air and beasts of the field, and they did so in the name of the Lord. They could do no wrong, so long as they followed the word of God, not to eat of a tree that sat in the center of the garden. That was when the serpent, the most crafty of creations of the Lord, approached Eve. Note, contrary to what you were taught in Sunday school, this snake isn't Satan. It's just described as the serpent, or a serpent, not the accuser, or the fallen angel that we'd come to know as Satan. Now, this serpent, with its silver tongue, tricked Eve into going to the center of the garden, and taking of its fruits. You see, this tree they were told not to eat from is the tree of knowledge, or the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And under the pretense that they would die from eating the fruit, Adam and Eve refrained. After all, the Lord told them so. The snake, however, informed them that eating of the fruit would not kill them, merely open their eyes and make them like God. Eve, enticed by this, ate of the fruit and quickly had her eyes opened. In shame or perhaps in fear, she took the fruit to Adam, and he too ate of it. And they both had their eyes opened, and their minds expanded to the good and evil of the world. And then... They heard the Lord like rolling thunder approaching. As the Lord approached, the pair hid, trying to hide their shame, their embarrassment, their nudity from their creator. However, the Lord is omniscient, and he saw this, and he called out to them, Why? Why have you hidden yourselves from me? And they replied of the fear of their nakedness. And in that moment, God realized, and soon the pair would explain that they had eaten from the fruit of the tree of knowledge. And with that, God grew furious, and he sent them out of the garden. You see, for the rest of their days, Adam and Eve would be punished to toil the land that once was so bounteous to them, and they would have to work, and thorns and thistles would oppose them to overcome their own original sin, and to prevent them from returning to the earthly paradise at which they were cast out, the Lord sent down an angel, a cherubim, with a flaming sword to prevent them from returning. And thus ends our story for today. You see, there's many more details to be told in the story of Adam and Eve, their children Cain and Abel, and the propagation of mankind. But those are stories for a different day. So until then, stay curious.